For as long as I've been a fan of comic books, Batman has always been my favorite character. Oh sure, it may have changed when I was an edgy teenager and discovered Deadpool for the first time, but as cliche and boring of a choice as it is, Batman will always be my number one. Best lineup of villains, best backstory, and some of the stupidest looking bat suits you can ever think of. Batman's overall look from a design standpoint has changed very little ever since his first appearance in 1939. Batman's rock the cape, the cowl, the black aesthetic, the dead parents, the utility belt, the fat cock, the bat symbol, and the list goes on. We would have been living in a very different alternate reality if Bill Finger didn't step in and help Bob Kane change some of his stupider fucking ideas as seen on the screen, but Batman has looked essentially the same for his entire run. Now, throughout Batman's almost 100 years of comics, there's always some up-and-coming writer who sniffs a little too much of the DC Comics brand-provided cocaine and splatters out a stupid bat suit design onto the page with no hint of, I'm trying to be ridiculous. I mean, the title of the video is, in fact, Batman's stupidest outfit, and we'll be getting to that, don't you worry. A lot of people's immediate go-to for worst Batman outfit is bat nipples from Batman and Robin. But in truth, I don't think that's nearly the worst one or even that bad. Yeah, having your diamond cutters be part of your intimidating vigilante costume is silly and obligatorily sexy, but the rest of the outfit is fine. And in truth, as terrible as it looks when they upgrade to the ice resistant suits, I kind of like it. It's stupid. And Batman and Robin was intentionally a campy, stupid movie. It's fine. It's fun. It's not good, but it's fun. Now, regardless, I'm not defending this point whatsoever. They are shitty outfits for sure, but I think calling them the worst of all time is overlooking some of the much, much more asinine choices. Here's some examples of dumb bat suits throughout the ages. Some of them aren't worn by Batman, but that doesn't matter. A bat suit is a bat suit, and they're built with the sole intention of copying Batman's look. They'll also help justify my point later. And besides, how can you nitpick me when the first one I'm showing off is Zebra Batman? There's Zebra Batman action figures, Zebra Batman posters, entire movies based around Zebra Batman, and he's even got his own Funko Pop. No, I'm just kidding, that'd be silly. Except I'm not kidding, because there is a Zebra Batman Funko Pop. I didn't plan that. I wrote Funko Pop as a joke and it's true. I was looking up different Batman Funko Pops and there it was. It turns out almost every single Batman to ever Batman has a Funko Pop. Which goes to show you, no matter how lame and forgotten the pop culture reference is, Funko Pops will make a product about it. Because their customers are even lamer. Okay, so you better believe there's another Batman Funko Pop about Jungle Batman. Even though it's just Batman doing a caveman cosplay? This isn't really a bat suit as much as it is Batman being Tarzan. And yet it's got its own collectible. I mean, who buys this shit? Okay, look, I'm officially done saying Funko Pops now because the only publicity I want them to see for the near future is new study links Funko Pop to wasted life syndrome. Here's the super heavy bat suit trying its best not to copy Iron Man. And here's mummy Batman and Robin trying their best to not suffocate. Oh, fucking Asbat. Oh, God, Asbat. More like ASBAT. ASBAT is this fucking close to winning, I swear. It is absolutely second in line for worst bat suit of all time. Batman of Zur N R is literally just Batman wearing red, purple, and yellow. He's actually a space alien from another planet who coincidentally is identical to Batman except the colors on his costume. Turns out DC writers used to be so desperate to ride bat dick, their first design for an alien that lives light years away was Batman. But a different color. If this was Marvel, Batman but a different color would have meant a very different thing. And let's just say Batman's first crime fighting would be for allowing him to use the same water fountain as everyone else. And on the subject of colors, we can transition into what I believe is the stupidest bat suit I've ever seen. Rainbow Batman. Rainbow Batman is Batman in his regular old bat suit but in a rainbow of colors. Now, some of you off the bat probably already agree with me. Oh God, I, I didn't even mean that off, off the bat. I didn't even mean to say that. You might already agree with me. Yep, that's the one. Holy shit, that's a terrible bat suit. That's the worst thing I've ever seen. But some of you may need more convincing. 
And if you need more convincing, allow me to share with you the origin of the Rainbow Batsuit. The Rainbow Batman first appears in Detective Comics issue 241 from 1957. The Rainbow Batman was also utilized in Batman the Brave and the Bold, but that was done with the intention of paying tribute to the 1957 comic I'm about to describe to you, as well as inventing an incredibly specific and stupid combat scenario to make the Rainbow Batman actually useful. Now I'll cover that more later. Keep in mind as well when I do that Brave and the Bold was an intentionally campy Batman cartoon, which doubles down just how fucking stupid this Batman costume is. Oh, Batman, last night you wore the green costume, and tonight you're wearing the red. Why? I must, Robin. I must wear a different colored Batman costume each night. So we've already hit the ground running with the comic book cover cock teasing us with a dumb premise. I made a whole video on this concept a while ago using Superman comics. You can watch that with the link in the description. But the idea is that you, the reader, who happened to be passing by a comic book stand in the 1950s would say to yourself, oh wow, now that I'm done hearing about that whole new planet Pluto that they just talked about and discovered, I think I'll read a comic book. What's this? Batman has to wear a different colored bat suit each night? Well, one true Lord Christian God, I've got to buy this and find out why. The story begins with Dick Grayson, aka Robin, walking down the street. When some thieves swerve around the corner in their getaway car and try to run over a small girl to add points to their kill streak bonus, Robin jumps in and saves her in the nick of time but smashes his elbow on a lamppost in the process. A doctor, played by Dick Cheney, tells Robin while his arm isn't broken, he'll be unable to use it for a week. Turns out the thieves stole a new broadcasting camera and Robin was the only one who saw their faces and could identify them. Hold on. This entire plot kicks off because Robin is alerted to the thieves by someone screaming in the street. It's probably a hysterical woman because this takes place in 1957. On top of that, there's a whole daring rescue where a little girl is almost killed. So I would wager 99% of people on the street corner at that time would have all eyes on this incident. And you're telling me, Robin, who was busy diving in front of a speeding car, is the only one who saw their faces this entire time. Number two, isn't one of the teachings of Batman that it takes far too much from people to try to be a superhero, and that ordinary people should use and bolster their local resources at their disposal to create change in the world? There's an entire Twitter thread dedicated to all the times Bruce Wayne and his company created huge charitable donations in public infrastructure, and it's a long fucking thread. So with that in mind, why in the diddly dick fuck does Dick have to race home and tell Batman what the robbers look like when a news reporter is right there? It doesn't even have to be one or the other. Tell the reporter so you can get the police investigating it, and then also tell Batman. Batman is not Superman. He's not there to protect the city from threats that humanity would shit their pants over. Three dudes stole a fucking camera. Let Larry the coffee boy down at the station handle it. And then we find out in the next page that Dick was even interviewed by the news. Meaning the entire time he spoke to them, he kept his mouth shut about who did it. Cool. Good job, Robin. Your admission into the Bat Internship program seems like it'll pay off in no time. Batman deduces that stealing a television broadcast camera means the criminals plan to use it to pose as a TV crew at a major event. Since they'll be unable to sell it, and any pornography they record on it would be way too high bandwidth to upload and sell on the internet. And what a fucking coincidence! The parade for the King of Zeronia is tomorrow! And coincidentally, for some reason, Batman and his bat car is in it. But Batman does something absolutely unbelievable. Something never before thought of by mortal men. Batman wears a red costume. And it's so distracting, people don't even notice the King of Zeronia's there. Yep, Batman wears a red outfit. It's the craziest fucking thing I could think of. The craziest thing I could think would ever happen. Hey, get that picture of Batman Zurin R who debuted only a year after this out of here. God damn, Batman wearing a red outfit? Could you imagine? Hey, get that picture of Red Hood out of here. A red Batman. I mean, Batman isn't red. That's ins- Hey, get that picture of Batman Beyond out of here. It's just unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. It's just absolutely unfathomable. A red Hey, get that picture of hell bad bat- Later that day, the bat signal flashes in the sky, and every single human ever to live in Gotham City is wondering if Batman's gonna show up in a ridiculous and inconceivable red costume again. But this time, he shows up in a blue costume! Wow, now I've seen everything. 
Batman in a blue costume? What were the writers thinking with this one? He could, hey, get that picture of Batman out of here. Also, take note of the fact that Robin mentions the Batmobile's controls have been modified so he can drive it with just one hand. Because on the very next page, he's driving it with fucking two. So there's this fucking explosives truck that's fucking on fire. It says explosives, and it's on the fuck fire. And Batman saves the day by driving it into the fucking river. But the most important thing that anybody could talk about is Batman's stupid blue ass. The Joker's probably across the city right now putting Joker semen in the water supply, and Two-Face is chewing on a AAA battery enough time to make him Three-Face. But all the Gotham News broadcasting wants to cover is the fact that Batman only ever does things for a reason, and his outfit being a different color must have a pretty good reason behind it. Marion Marley is a giant movie star who's coming into Gotham. And no one gives a flying fuck because Batman's wearing a gold costume! Okay, okay, I get it. First time, Batman in red. It's a little weird. It's unusual. Second time, he's blue. Uh, great. Sweet. But by this point, we get it, right? Like, that's enough? I mean, you think by this point they say, Ah, what do you say, Joe? What color is Batman's costume today? Gold? Ah, mighty fine color. Now get a good close-up of Miss Marley's gams. Batman and Robin go to a diamond show where Batman is now orange. The gallery owner kicks him out. Because Gotham City is too poor to afford the color orange, and Batman is single-handedly crashing their economy. Batman and Robin go to a boat christening, and this time Batman is green. You may think it's to promote recycling, but this is 1957, so go fuck yourself. He stops a plan to sabotage the boat. Then Robin mentioned that tomorrow is the big sharpshooting contest at the stadium. It could be dangerous, all right, but we've got to look for them there, too, and we'll take precautions. So what color do you think Batman's gonna be at the sharpshooting contest? Purple? Maybe maybe silver? He did gold before, and now silver. We're in the silver age of comics. Nope. Batman goes to a sharpshooting contest with a goddamn target in the middle of his fucking chest. By the way, when you order that Zebra Batman Funko Pop, it comes as a two-pack with Bullseye Batman. <laughs> I mean... Look, I... <laughs> I love it. I love merchandise as much as the next guy, but come on, man. So anyway, Batman shows up to a contest of men with loaded guns shooting at targets with a giant target painted on his chest. <laughs> and Batman is just like, no, no, please, I know I violate many safety violations, but don't let me stop your contest. <laughs> and then he's shot in the fucking chest. <laughs> and then he's shot in the chest. Somehow. I have no idea how could this, this could have possibly happened. <laughs> Why? Why would he ever wear this? Even outside of a sharpshooting contest. You don't need to be at a gun range to expect to be shot in the chest, Batman. You're Batman. Especially when he was shot from a building that's not even at the gun range. But it's okay. It's fine. Batman explains that he wore a steel vest under his costume to stop the bullet. Batman's the kind of guy to get caught speeding on the highway at 120 miles per hour. And when asked what he's thinking, he says, Don't worry, officer. My car has brakes. Batman's explanation either way is that anyone who wanted to shoot Batman would aim for the bullseye, thus directing their shot to the armor underneath. Why not wear the bullseye everywhere you go then, Batman? I mean, fuck me, just sew a sign on the back of your cape that says, please shoot Batman on the other side. It, 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 it'll work for sure, I swear. No one ever aims for the head, Batman. And also, no one ever shoots more than once. Never. They shoot one bullet, and immediately they just get out of there. They don't just, you know, they don't pop more than one in there. No, your armor is going to work forever. So after all the commotion, Batman says, Still, you know I must wear these costumes, Robin. Yes, it does seem the only way we can keep searching for those thieves if we only do what they plan to do with the TV camera. Hold the fucking bat phone. This is the only way to search for these thieves? I already listed off a few better ways to handle it earlier. 
And hell, here's another one I just came up with off the top of my head. Have Robin use the back computer and print out sketches of the criminals and give it to the police or like hunt them down in the cra bat criminal database. This is absolutely something he could be doing right now. This is the era of I have literally every piece of fictional technology known to man superheroing. But hell, let's try another. How about you do some fucking detective work, world's greatest detective? One of Batman's modus operandi is stealth and detective work. Now, to be fair, in the Silver Age of Comics, which was around when the story was published, Batman was more of a cartoon character. But from the very beginning, his entire shtick has been world's greatest detective. This story isn't even in the Batman comic book line. It's in Detective Comics. Go on a stakeout. Spy on these events from the distance. Lurk in the crowd and blend in. Wear a costume or disguise, one that doesn't draw attention to you. Run to a nearby phone booth and change into Batman when you need to bust their ass from that point. You don't need to fucking announce yourself to the entire planet just to eventually capture some camera thieves. Hell, it'll be even easier to just have Robin go in as Dick Grayson to these events because he was noted for witnessing the crime. So he could run around as Dick Grayson and go, those are the guys that I saw Stay take the camera and then run around the corner where Batman's waiting in some alley and go, Batman, they're right there. I see them. Here's who they are. Meanwhile, at the mobster's hideout, the camera's all ready, and it'll get us one million dollars. If Batman doesn't catch on to our scheme, he worries me with those queer costumes of his. Why is he wearing them? Oh. Oh, buddy. If you think Batman's costumes have been queer so far, you're not ready for what's on the next page. Because lurking on the next page is Rainbow Batman. Next day, at the fabulous Monies of the World exhibit, there will be a big crowd when we open today. It's the biggest money exhibit we ever put on. What will really draw people in is that one million dollars in cash. Ah, uh, the money show. Yes, the local money show. Or you go look at the money. That happens all the time. The show where they show off the money. You know, where the, the, the exhibit is money. You pay money to go look at some money. The money show. Batman and Robin kind of just stand around until the gangsters come in, and Robin clears a bell, screams, That's them, Batman! That's one of the guys who stole the camera! And somewhere on the other side of the room, someone paying a modicum of attention says, Wait a minute, did Robin just yell that those are the guys who stole the camera? But only Dick Grayson saw who they were, as established by our stupid fucking logic earlier. That must mean that Dick Grayson is Robin. In an instant, Batman becomes a rainbow of dazzling action. Whatever you've got in your pocket, pal, that's where it stays. That's the same thing I said to my cellmate in prison. Batman deduces through this whole plot that one of the cameras is booby-trapped. I thought so. This one would have flooded the whole hall with tear gas when turned on. Then thieves with gas masks could have snatched that one million dollars in spite of the guards. This altered camera must have been switched for mine during the confusion of setting up our equipment. Television cameras back in the 50s weighed approximately 310 pounds. And no, no one would have noticed three burly thugs who aren't members of the television crew just swapping one of them for one they brought in the back seat of their car. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure. There go the other two crooks, Batman. I've got this one. They'll find no pot of gold at the end of this rainbow. Only prison. Ah, a classic Memphis rainbow. I'm glad you caught the rascals, sir. But why did you have to wear such gaudy garments? You see, Alfred, Robin had to help me find those thieves because only he had seen their faces and could identify them. But if anyone noticed that as Robin, I couldn't use my left arm. They might remember the publicity about Dick Grayson's injury and suspect our identity. That's why I wore such colorful, eye-catching costumes. So everyone would look at me and not Robin. Robin never performs an action that requires both of his arms at any point in this comic. Researching the criminals, driving the Batmobile with new one-handed controls, being at a Hollywood bimbo's plane landing, getting kicked out of a jewelry showcase, watching as Batman does literally all the work in saving the ship platform from being destroyed, pointing out the sniper even though he sort of does it with both arms, and screaming, I, Dick Grayson, a.k.a. Robin, have identified the camera thieves, requiring no use of his left hand at any point. The only time you think this would be an issue is when Batman and Robin have to arrest the thugs, but Robin just resorts to a swift, literal ass-kicking. 
Again, no arm movement involved whatsoever. If anything, Batman's plane succeeded in performing its exact opposite intended purpose. It drew more attention to Batman and Robin than ever before, and placed a higher danger on both of their lives when a much more simple, effective plan would have solved the issue entirely. But a simple, effective plan doesn't sell a comic book issue entirely. So here we are at Rainbow Batman. Rainbow Batman is the stupidest Batman costume for one simple reason. It is utterly pointless. And in fact, in the grand scheme of everything, made the job harder and made everything worse. All other Batman outfits I mentioned earlier serve at least some functional purpose relevant to Batman's mission when they're not explicitly drawn as a joke. Jungle Batman was made when Batman and Robin woke up mostly naked on an island and had to scrounge for supplies, as a man and his boy servant often do. Ass Bat's design is because the suit is heavily armored and loaded with weaponry. Zebra Batman was the result of a villain covering Batman in lines of magnetic force, which he actually then utilizes later to subdue said villain. There's some sort of logic to all of these suits, no matter how over the top and ridiculous it may be. But Rainbow Batman is not only nonsensical, it's highly impractical. Rainbow Batman is not only a suit that Wayne Corp needed dozens of child sweatshops to make due to its elaborate tailoring, but it needs a red, blue, gold, green, etc. set of suits just to build up to it to have it have its full effect. And then there's the fact that Batman only had one day to prepare all of this since the King of Zeronia was coming the very day after Robin hurt his arm. Meaning Batman planned all of this shit way in advance. And knowing Batman, he probably could have spent his time doing... Literally anything else. But the brave and the bold, Hugbees, that's what you cry. What about Batman brave and the bold? He brings back the rainbow bat suit in the show to defeat Firefly and the rainbow creature. The sheer fact that I have to spell a counter argument that unironically brings up the rainbow creature is pathetic, but I do what I have to do for the good of my people. In this episode, Batman explains that Firefly and the rainbow creature's powers are nullified by objects of the same type. So Batman puts on a rainbow bat suit to nullify their attacks. He initially wears a red bat suit to nullify a red attack, even though he could have started the episode wearing the rainbow bat suit, but don't worry about it. And either way, that's great for Robin. His natural costume means means that he's immune to any red, yellow, and green attacks. If we also found him a blue hat or something, he would naturally be immune to each and every blow that those two bastards could throw at him. So the rainbow creature blasts Robin with a green ray, and he's turned two-dimensional and affected by it, despite the fact that his gloves, sleeves, and boots are all green. Okay, fuck it, never mind. Rainbow Batman doesn't do anything. It's plot convenience that does everything. And when an intentional, campy throwback series writes a story explicitly to pay tribute to the dumbest fucking thing Batman has ever done, the writers are still able to find a plot hole in its 2 minute and 18 second segment runtime. That's amazing. Rainbow Batman destroys each and every facet of what a good Batman costume is. No longer is Batman dark and stealthy to blend into his surroundings. He's as visible as every object you could possibly fit in the entire color spectrum. No longer does Batman's outfit change to face a specific threat. He changes his outfit because the people of Gotham have never seen the color blue before. No longer does Batman's outfit provide a prominent aesthetic to intimidate foes and symbolize his power. His outfit just makes me want to suck his dick. Batman has been around for almost a century, and with it has come an ass load of weird, stupid, and out of character choices for him. But there's just something about Rainbow Batman that pisses me off. Far more than bat nipples. Far more. Even more than the way he acted in All-Star Batman. Uh, okay, no, nothing is worse than All-Star Batman. I got reminded of All-Star Batman while doing some Googling for this video, and man, I should... I should cover All-Star Batman. It's... Google some screenshots of All-Star Batman if you haven't seen it. It's a classic. I think you'll like it.